How are you? Just open with a word of prayer. Lord, I come to thee again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray thy blessing now upon my word. That Pray for those who are not saved, that they'll be saved as a result of uh, listening to this message. And if those who are saved are listening or watching, just pray thy blessing upon thy people. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to look tonight at the subject of, uh, or the little phrase, come unto me. Now this is found in Matthew 11, uh, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. We'll go to verse uh, 20 at the moment. Matthew 11, verse 20, first of all. Yeah, Matthew 11, verse 20. Then began he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Zidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Zidon at the day of judgment than for you. And now Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee uh, had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for, you, for thee. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save or except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And here's the little expression. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And going back to verse 20 where we started at, verse 20 of uh, Matthew 11, then began, began he to upbraid, that's criticize, in an abusive or angrily insulting manner. The cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Now, he was angry with these folks because they repented not. And they should have repented. They should have understood that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God. But they failed to understand this. They failed to take that on board. They failed to realize who he really is. And so they missed out on the blessing of God. They missed out on God's salvation. And that's what I'm really interested in for you today. When you're listening or watching this video, you must be saved. I want you to be saved. God wants you to be saved more than any of the children of God upon this earth want you to be saved. It's the most urgent matter in your life to have salvation for your sins. And the Lord Jesus Christ is offering that unto you in this uh, passage here. We can see. And so... Um, I want to go back now to Isaiah 23 and uh, verse 17. Isaiah Isaiah 23 and verse 17. 
And it shall come to pass after the end of 70 years that the Lord will visit Tyre. And she shall turn to her hire and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. Now the siege of uh, Tyre was led by Alexander the Great in 333 BC during his campaigns against the Persians. It is said that Alexander was so enraged at the Tyranian defence of their city and the loss of his men that he destroyed half the city. A Sidon means fishery. So we get Tyre and then now we got Sidon. Uh, the city was eventually conquered by the Arabs. So these judgment came judgments came upon these these two cities, Tyre and Zion, because of their rejection of the Lord God Almighty. They failed to understand that they should believe in God, that they should believe on the Lord in the Old Testament, that they would be saved, that they would call upon the name of the Lord in the Old Testament and be saved as a result of that, realizing that they were without strength to save themselves. And they couldn't by any means get to heaven apart from faith in God himself. And the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, is the one that we look to now. In the New Testament time, we look to the Lord Jesus Christ who was crucified upon the cross that you and I might be brought back to that holy, sin-hating God. And so they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. This is Tyre and Zidon. Um, now, repented is to think differently or afterward, that is, reconsider. And sackcloth was worn as a sign of grief. I wonder, have you reconsidered your sinfulness before God? This is what you need to do. Do you feel grieved and concerned about your sin? I hope you do at this point. If you have and do, that's good. Because God wants to save you right now. Wherever you are, God wants to save you right now. Uh, verse 23 of, um, of our chapter, Matthew 11. Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven. They were exalted to heaven because they had had a golden opportunity to be saved. Because the Savior was with them on earth. But they rejected him. As a result, they shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had, have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Now Jude 1 and verse 7. Jude 1 and verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, remember in the Old Testament, these two cities, and the cities about them, now that there was more than Sodom and Gomorrah, there was other cities about them as well, in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, that sodomy, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. See, the more times you reject Christ as your Saviour, the worse you will suffer in the lake of fire if you die without Christ. See, if you die without Christ, you'll be in hell and eventually stand before the great white throne judgment, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ who could have been your Saviour when you were on, here on earth, and yet you refused or rejected him, and as a result, you'll be standing before him. And he won't be your Saviour that day. It's too late then. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you will hear his voice, that is the voice of God, through the Bible, the word of God, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before it's forever 
and eternally too late. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't become hard toward God. You need to remain in a soft condition where God can save your soul. Your soul is so precious unto the Lord that he wants you to be in heaven with him for all of eternity. And that can only take place through the once-for-all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross and his precious blood that was shed that day to redeem us back unto himself, that we might be brought into the family of God. You see, we've got to be born again. We are not the children of God when we're born into this world. We need to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 25, verse 25 of our um, reading here in Matthew 11, at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hath revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. But Proverbs twelve fifteen. Proverbs 12 and 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Note that, in his own eyes. It doesn't say in God's eyes. It says, in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You know, we've got to hearken unto the counsel of the Lord found in the word of God here, the Bible. We've got to take notice of what God says because really, when it's all boiled down, God is the only one that knows what he's talking about. Let God be true, but every man a liar. This is a, a reality. You know, men might know things in this world about instructions about how to, you know, work computers and do this and that and something else with technology and whatever it might be. But God is the only one that can really instruct us concerning eternal things, concerning the things that last. You see... All the things that we can see in this world, including our bodies and ourselves, in our, our bodies and everything, they're temporary. They won't last forever. But the things that are eternal, the things that you can't see, see those things are eternal. And that includes our spirit and soul inside of our body. These things are eternal. At the moment of death, your spirit and soul will leave your body the same as mine, will leave my body and we won't be here anymore. I wonder where are you headed? Are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? There's no need to stay on that road. You need to change directions. You need to get off that road. You need to get on the narrow road that leads unto heaven. And the only way we can be there is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that once for all sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross, and he can be your saviour right this very moment. These things, they might be right in our own eyes, but we need to hearken unto the counsel of the Lord found in the word of God. So Matthew 19, verses 13 and 14. Matthew 19, verse 13, Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And his disciples rebuked them or told them off. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, or permit little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So what we need to understand is that we need to become as little children. And 
that means we're dependent upon the Lord for our eternal salvation. You see, salvation is of the Lord. If we're ever going to be in heaven, it'll have to be God's work. God is the only one that can supply salvation for us. And he's done that in his son. When he sent his son down from heaven to die upon the cross, he's done that now. And you and I can have an opportunity, the only opportunity that we have of being saved, of being children of God, of having everlasting life and peace with God and a home in heaven for all eternity through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we we'll humble ourselves and become as little children in his sight, realizing that we've got no strength whatsoever to save ourselves. We're cast upon the Lord for our eternal salvation. We've got to look to him. We've got to call upon the Lord to receive salvation from himself. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be yours right where you are now through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say here, uh, Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. This is, um, you know, going back to um, Matthew 11. Uh, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man save the Son, or except the Son. Um, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Uh, that was um, yeah. So the Son will reveal the Father unto us if we're willing. And if we come in repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, we've got to come, or I want to come now to uh, John chapter 5, verses 21 to 24. John chapter Yeah, John chapter 5, verse 21. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, that means makes them alive, even so the Son quickeneth, or makes alive, whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Remember, I said that if you die without Christ, you'll stand before the great white throne judgment. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who could have been your saviour, will be the judge. That's because the Father hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Why? Because he died upon the cross. Because he's the sinless sacrifice that died as our substitute upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Because he loved us so much. Um but hath committed all judgment under the Son, that all men should honour the Son, even as they honour the Father. He that honoureth not the Son, honoureth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, that means judgment, but is passed from death, unto life. See, do you realize that you're actually in a state of death now? I don't mean physical death because you're obviously on this earth if you're watching this or listening to this now. But the point is this, you and I are spiritually dead when we're born into this world because we're sinners in the sight of the Lord. Now we need forgiveness for those sins. God wants to make us alive in Christ. God wants to give us the new birth. Being born from above. Born again, that means born from above. Born into God's family through faith in the Lord Je Jesus Christ. And that can be yours right where you are right now if you come in repentance and faith and become as a, like a little child in dependence 
upon the Lord for your eternal salvation. Now, verse 28 of Matthew 11, getting back to our original um, uh, um, passage there, says this, Come unto me, and that's what the message is all about tonight. Come unto me. It's important. We need to come unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because there's no one else to come to. You know, there were, there were disciples, and some of the disciples turned back and walked no more with him, uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ t turned to his disciples that were closer to him and said, Will you go away also? Or words to this effect. And Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we are sure that thou art the Christ, or thou, thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. He was fully persuaded, and he knew that there was no one else to turn to, no one else to run to, no one else to reach out the hand of faith to. And I'm telling you, right now, wherever you are, there's no one else, nowhere else and no one else that you can come to, that you can flee to, for your eternal salvation. You have to be the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. We'll get to that in a minute. But, um, yes, as I said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, only there's rest only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to understand that. And if you're not a child of God, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to, you to come to, unto him to receive rest from the burden and punishment of your sins right now. This can only happen through repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. What is repentance? Repentance in relation to salvation is a change of mind. Basically coming to God and agreeing with him. Yes, I realize that I am a sinner in thy sight. And then all you've got to do is reach out the hand of faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, because he's the only saviour of us poor sinners. Reach out to him and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. Now, verses 29 and 30 apply to believers. So 20, verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, Matthew 21, verses 4 and 5, In Matthew 21, verse 4, All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek. Remember we had this back in um, verse 29 of uh, Matthew 11. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Behold, thy co king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husband, husbandry, ye are God's building. So what I'm trying to get across is here, um, and you shall find rest unto your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, we as the people of God 
are laborers together with God. It's like being in the yoke with our Lord Jesus Christ together. And so this is how to find rest. It's when we're yoked up to our Lord Jesus Christ as fellow workers with God, as it were, in the things of God. And um, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And it could read like this. For I am humble and of low degree in mind. In other words, he wasn't puffed up in any way. Not like the, the actors and singers of this world, the Hollywood actors and whatever. They're puffed up in their own mind. They really think they're something when they're really nothing in the sight of the Lord. They've got to be humbled to be saved. And we all have to be humbled to be saved. We all have to become like little children, as I've said before. So our Lord Jesus Christ is humble and of low degree in mind. Even though he created everything, even though he's the God of the universe, he's humble and of low degree in mind. And as a result of that, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Now, the souls, uh, souls here has the thought of our minds, of our minds. So, and ye shall find rest and in your minds, or, yes, and ye shall find rest in your minds, or for your minds. Now, verse 30, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. It's wonderful, isn't it, to be associated with our Lord Jesus Christ in salvation, that we're children of God now through faith alone in him, through his precious blood that was shed upon the cross, in whom we have redemption. Through his blood, even, the forgiveness of sins. Just finish with this one verse, Philippians 4.13, very well-known verse. I can do all things through Christ. That's important. It's through Christ which strengtheneth me. So it's by the indwelling Christ inside of us as believers, as the children of God, that the Lord Jesus Christ would give us the strength to please God. We're fellow workers together with God and we, we can be yoked up together with our Lord Jesus Christ and find that um, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I hope that's been a help unto you as a believer. And also, I hope that you've understood the message of salvation now. If you hadn't understood it before, I hope today will be the day of your eternal salvation. Lord, I come to thee again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thee thanks that now the opportunity to preach thy son. I just pray that if there's anyone out there who's not saved, who's listening to this or looking to this later, looking at this later on, today will be the, the day of their eternal salvation. I pray for thy people that we might be strengthened. We might realize that the strength doesn't come for us from us in the Christian life. It comes from the presence of the indwelling Christ and the Holy Spirit within our bodies. We thank thee that thou hast provided for our every need. And may we come unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thanks for watching this, and um, God bless you.